Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The head of the guillotined French princess. During the reign of terror in France, it is estimated that 14,000 people lost their heads on the execution device known as the guillotine. Those who perished included even the French king and queen, and many political figures who rose to prominence during the French Revolution would also lose their heads. Executioners perfected the method of execution to the point where, in seconds, the blade would be released. And what was shocking was that the French population, to begin with, did not like the guillotine. They preferred more brutal and barbaric methods of execution, such as the breaking wheel, which would give them more of an entertaining spectacle, which was based on a longer, torturous ordeal. But as mentioned, members of the royal family would lose their heads, and one of those who did was Elizabeth of France, a princess who was the sister of the disgraced king Louis XVI. Many believe today that she was a martyr, but following the blade falling on her, her head was then subjected to a strange ordeal. But what is the story of the head of the guillotined French princess? Elizabeth was born on the 3rd of May 1764, and she was the youngest child at the time of the Dauphin of France, Louis. Her grandparents were King Louis XV and the Queen Marie. However, her father suddenly died when she was a year old, meaning her older brother, Louis, then became the heir to the French throne. Their mother died two years later, leaving Elizabeth an orphan at the age of two, and she was raised by her governess along with her sister. Elizabeth was a proud and happy child, and she had a fantastic education which showed her status as a royal princess, and she learned different subjects, including languages, geography and history. But there came a point in her life where her opinions and ideas changed, and Elizabeth then became not too focused on her education. In 1770, her brother would marry Marie Antoinette, an Austrian princess, and Marie would state that Elizabeth was delightful and was a lovely girl. But on the 10th of May 1774, her grandfather died, meaning that her older brother became King Louis XVI and Marie became Queen. She would state of Elizabeth that, My sister Elizabeth is a charming child who has intelligence, character and much grace. She showed the greatest feeling and much above her age at the departure of her sister. The poor little girl was in despair and as her health is very delicate, she was taken ill and had a very severe nervous attack. I own to my own dear mamma that I fear I am getting too attached to her, feeling, from the example of my aunts, how essential it is for her happiness not to remain an old maid in this country. Elizabeth came out of the children's chamber in 1778, and she was given her own household, and there were attempts to marry her off to a wealthy European monarch and king. This was seen as a move by her brother to unite countries and to build allies with the French and there were many suggestions put forward. One possible match was the Prince of Brazil, and then the Duke of Aosta, and then the King of Sardinia. But nothing worked out, and a marriage was then agreed between her and her sister's brother-in-law, the Holy Roman Emperor, Joseph II. He was attracted to her, but people at court were opposed to this, and arrangements for marriage were abandoned. Elizabeth would state, I can only marry a king's son, and a king's son must reign over his father's kingdom. I should no longer be a French woman. I do not wish to cease to be one. It is far better to stay here at the foot of my brother's throne than to ascend to another. But she would become a very important member of the royal family, and during the French Revolution she would distance herself from her brother and sister-in-law the king and queen, she saw the court spending as lavish and too much, and she would only attend court when absolutely necessary, and she did see the suffering of the French people. Elizabeth did respect her brother and support him, but things did become strained between her and Marie. The women were both very different, and despite Marie finding Elizabeth great, Elizabeth was close with other family members who did not feel as warm towards Marie. Elizabeth would be critical of the Queen and the King's behaviour, but she was given houses and land by the King, and was given a house where the King would control what she would do, where she would sleep and where she would stay. 
At her home at Montreal, she would enjoy gardening and other activities, and she would give charity to the locals and would help when she could. The locals would receive the food from her farm, but during the French Revolution, Elizabeth would refuse to leave and she would be there to witness the women's march on Versailles. She advised her brother the king to put down the riot, and this was not adhered to. The angry mob would storm the palace and try to assassinate the queen, but Elizabeth then went with the royal family to Paris. She would not live with them and was housed next to the queen. The women were thought of differently, and Elizabeth did have a positive rapport with the population. She was seen as different, but she chose to stay in France when she could have fled and saved her life. She did try to escape in the June of 1791, but the plan ultimately went wrong, and the royal family were kept then under close watch. But Elizabeth was free to leave when she wanted, but she stuck with the royals. Elizabeth, being perceived as different from the start, was good for her, but she knew something bad was on the horizon for the monarchy. The royal court thought that the palace would be attacked and Elizabeth would see her brother lose the throne. When this happened, Elizabeth was calm, but after her brother the king's execution, Elizabeth was now stuck with Marie Antoinette. She was moved and asked to stay in contact with Marie, but of course the queen also was executed on the guillotine, on the 16th of October 1793. The final letter she wrote was addressed to Elizabeth, but this was never received. Elizabeth, despite being seen as a good royal, was brought to trial, and there were large amounts of accusations levelled against her. She was not seen as initially dangerous or as needing execution, however the authorities were going to banish her from France but she was accused of being involved in secret meetings with the French Queen and of conspiring against the French people. Elizabeth, it was claimed, sold her diamonds to fund a war, and she was accused of having ordered a massacre of the people who raided the palace. This was not correct, and she was then held in a small cell and was at her trial, and she was refused a defence lawyer. She was then tried alongside 24 others, including 10 women, and she was said to have been an accomplice to the tyrannical monarchy, and following this, she was sentenced to death. Her death sentence can be conceived to have been unfair, but after her trial, Elizabeth joined other condemned prisoners inside the hall of the condemned to await her date with the executioner. She would be a comfort for those in the final moments, and it was said that she spoke to them with inexpressible gentleness and calm, dominating their mental suffering by the serenity of her look, the tranquillity of her appearance and the influence of her words. Along with 23 others, Elizabeth was to be executed, and she approached the guillotine, and a white cloth which covered her head caught the wind and blew off, and she would be the only person in the procession of the dead with a bare head. She was then taken to the foot of the guillotine, where the condemned would wait, and she was sat on a bench to wait her turn, She left the cart first and made her way to the bench, but she was the last of the set to be executed. Women bowed their heads for her as she went up the stairs to the guillotine and Elizabeth helped others in their final moments. It was said she had the mercy of God before it was her turn. As she was summoned to the guillotine, she was strapped to the board and her shawl fell off and she exposed her shoulders. She said to the executioner, In the name of your mother, cover me. When the blade fell, taking Princess Elizabeth's head clean off, there was an audible shock in the crowd. Many people did not issue the standard cry of the revolution, but they witnessed her death in silence. Robespierre was concerned that he had executed a martyr and that her execution would make people turn against the revolution. But this was not the end of her story. To begin with, Elizabeth's remains were taken from the scaffold and they were then buried in a common grave, amongst other condemned people, at the Aransas Cemetery in Paris. As soon as her head had been taken off, though, Madame Tussaud, the artist who made waxwork models, would be given Elizabeth's head, and she would then, inside of the cemetery, make a cast of her face. This was ordered for her to do so by the French authorities, and from this she would then create a head of the Princess Elizabeth, and a waxwork cast of her head which was haunting. It shows the princess looking fierce, and it was based on the cast taken directly after her execution. 
Following the restoration, Princess Elizabeth's brother, King Louis XVIII, would look for her remains, and he only found that when the common grave was opened that the remains had decomposed to such a state that they could not be identified. Because of this, there was no royal burial, and instead the remains of her and other victims of the guillotine, including even Robespierre, were buried inside of the Arancis Cemetery and were moved to the catacombs of Paris. This means that one of the skulls which can be found in the underground tunnels belonged to a royal princess who lost her head in a brutal execution that the French would live to regret. There have been calls to make Elizabeth of France a saint, and there have been talks about this, but it has been halted due to the belief that she was not killed for her faith, despite the fact she was a strong Catholic. Elizabeth of France was different to her brother and sister-in-law, the king and queen, and it's believed that she was liked by the French population, but to many she was just a symbol of the monarchy who needed dealing with, and because of this she would be executed in front of a huge crowd who paid their respects as she lost her head on the guillotine. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.